Hello. This is a, a, a film analysis, a review by Rob Agger. He's talking about Cell Block, or I should say Brawl and Cell Block 99. Now, this isn't a dig against Iger. I know I've done a couple of videos about him before, and that's all I, know, I need to say about him. But he does bring up some interesting things about this movie, Cell Block 99. And I would like to say, like, guys who go and watch it, be honest to why you're watching it. You know, and this one, I don't, I'm not crazy about films like this as opposed to something like the honesty of why people go to Saw movies. You go to a Saw movie, you, you go there to see people torn apart, and you're honest about that. But Cell Block 99 here, uh, guys love it, but there's a bit of dishonesty. Let's take a look. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about eight particular things that the film does very well, which uh, Hollywood can learn from, or the script writers can learn from, and maybe film critics themselves can learn from. So I'll just get straight into it. Number one, give your characters a hidden history. Although this film is primarily an in-the-moment experience, various hints are given that the characters have a long and complex history of experiences that are affecting them in the moment. There are the briefest dialogue statements that lead character Bradley's wife, Lauren, had a miscarriage of their previous child-to-be. Have there been difficulties? With our first one, but not this time. Now, this is presented as a throwaway plot point, but it's incredibly important. For some couples, a miscarriage can be a terrible trauma, and given the absolute determination Bradley shows in this film to protect Lauren's second pregnancy, that miscarriage must have been devastating. Yeah, there's a couple things here. Of course you want it hidden. We don't want to see our heroes here show any vulnerability at all. You know, he's a tough guy. We want to see this guy destroy these other guys, right? And why is he destroying it? Well, like I said, the Saw movies, you're just honest and you come in and say, I want to see the people destroyed. But these kind of hero type movies, I've lost respect for because they're not willing to say that's the reason. They, they want to hide it behind protection of a first pregnancy. And you know something? <laughs> Why it's so lame is that his ex, she could turn around and get rid of that fetus. She could decide to abort it. And all of a sudden, he'll just, this guy here, our hero, he'll turn around and accept that. He'll say, sure, you know, honey, we'll get another one. So all these guys are getting destroyed for the protection of this fetus. This fetus will be tossed away at the female's behalf, you know, anytime she feels like it. That's what the fetus actually means about to this guy. So he's not really fighting the, to protect an unborn child. He's fighting to have this woman uh, for, he, for him to revolve around. So whatever she wants, that's what's actually going on. If guys really cared about unborn fetuses, uh, there'd be laws against women aborting and saying, sorry, this is my child too. You are not allowed to abort. You can give birth to this child, which is my child. And if you want to take off, you can after that. But of course, we know that's, that's not how it works. So it's such a feeble reason for this man to destroy other men. Men needed that excuse, right? They need that excuse to destroy other people. Another seemingly throwaway plot point is that Bradley is a teetotaler who desperately avoids alcohol even when he loses his job. Hey, into the fridge. You'll get you your faggot in the middle of water. I didn't know H2O's got a sexual orientation. Well, the centrality of this plot point is present in the opening shot of the film. A tow truck driven by Bradley crushes an empty beer can. So was he a full-on alcoholic in the past? 
And if so, how long did this go on? Did it make him violent or abusive to his wife? Did it make him get into bar fights? Yeah, you see, he's a teetotaler, but we got to believe this tough guy was, you know, a, a hard ass, guzzle it down, take another one, kick some ass at the bar. We don't want to know that he's a nice guy. We want him to be a badass. But it's hard to identify with guys who just fist fight like uh, animals. So we need to say, oh, he's a reformed bad guy. This is so typical. Actually kind of pathetic when you think about it. Depth. And then there's how he fights. He doesn't just fight like a boxer. He uses martial arts and he snaps limbs at the joints. Where did he learn all this stuff? Was he in the military? Was he in special forces? All of these questions make him a really interesting character to watch. But... <laughs> of course it has to be hidden. Because if they tried to explain it in any way, then guys who actually do uh, involve themselves with you know, martial arts, they would turn around and say, well, that doesn't work, or he doesn't have enough time to learn it that way, or, or whatever. It did be all these critiques. So you turn around and just say, it's all hidden. Uh, he's like Batman. He's been, uh, you know, just learning in the background, and you can fill in the blanks yourself. You know. This is the most important aspect of script writing. If the characters act in ways that are convincing in terms of motivation, then the most surreal horror or sci-fi movies can be made to feel like genuine human stories. Movies like Alien. Get the motivations wrong, and I personally very quickly lose interest in the film I'm watching. Let's look at some examples. Bradley finds out that his wife has been having an affair, and after taking a couple of minutes to smash her car up instead of hitting her, he forgives her and asks to make a new start with her and try for a baby. Typically, forgiving infidelity this fast would come off as unrealistic, even in a movie. But Bradley has already lost his job on the same day, so understandably, he doesn't want to lose his one. I don't know if it is that unrealistic now. You know, things are just getting <laughs> worse and worse all the time. You know, guys, the, the deselection process has gone up, and the, the, the price of bribing women into your life has gone up. So I see guys accepting more and more all the time, you know? I mean, this woman too, <laughs> so typical. She's sleeping around. Why is she sleeping around? Because she can. And this guy accepts it. She has all the power in this relationship because she, she can just ditch this guy. She's not really emotionally invested in him. He's the one, if she decides just to bug off, he'd probably go postal. Because he, he doesn't have anything going on in his life other than say he can revolve around this girl. Wife as well. She also tells him that she thought he was seeing someone else because he's been ignoring her and staying out a lot. So he acknowledges that he drove her away and that's a good second reason to quickly forgive. <laughs> that is a lame excuse the girls use all the time. You were ignoring me, so I slept around. It doesn't work the other way. If, the, if you start to find some woman who actually pleases you when your wife's ignoring you, they do not accept that. They just turn around and said, you, you promised fidelity. But in any event, fidelity means nothing to the modern person. Even though the practical plot point decisions about their future, Bradley engages in psychotic levels of violence that would in most circumstances, disconnect our empathy for him. But That's disgusting. He took the man's face off and was supposed to say, oh, he's such a good guy. Tell me something, why? <laughs> you know, we want to see this man destroy other men. I, I think I, I prefer at this stage in the game to say, no, I, I just want to go to, to a movie and see a psychopath destroy other guys, rather than hide you know, this guy is some kind of hero. I mean, look at this. I mean, the guy, he's rubbing the guy's face off. It's all a part of this uh, 
you know, what do you call it? The guys love the the dominance hierarchy, for lack of a better term. You know, intimidation. That's what I'm talking about. You know, it's not enough for him to dismantle it. You know, just like if if this guy just kept low and then just attacked these guys, knocked them out or whatever, that the guys would find it dissatisfying. They want to see all this intimidation, like, look how tough I am, and this is what I'm going to do to you, you know. And, but it's all in the name of this unborn child that the wife can dispense at at any time. <laughs> My God. <laughs> you know. violence that would, in most circumstances, disconnect our empathy for him. And you know why? This is a very Tradcon movie. Uh, guys do, Tradcons do emphasize emphasize with this guy they would love to destroy other men and have some flimsy excuse it's kind of like the guy who says hey were you looking at me he's just, you know, they can't just come up and punch you in the face right they've got to build things up <laughs> and looks for anything that they can go do to, to get the fight started and that's all that's going on here transfer to the max security prison we might not agree that this was his best cause of action, but boy, we can understand why he would perceive this as being the most viable cause of action to save his child. The desire to protect one's own family is one of the most powerful motivations a person can have. And a lot of... Tradcon bullshit. He's not trying to protect his child. Like I said, this pretty woman can ditch that child at any time. If she doesn't abort it, and all of a sudden the child is born, and she changes her mind, she can choke that child out and cry postpartum depression. This guy isn't fighting for his unborn child. He's fighting to have this woman that he can revolve around. She doesn't revolve around him, he revolves around her. So know that. That's what this guy is fighting for. He's a loser in the end. 99 gets the balance right. Bradley reads people and situations very fast. Here, he instinctively knows he's about to be fired. This is a surprise party. Somebody missed the cue. It's a tough time for businesses right now. I'm really interested in the economy. Am I getting laid off? Here, he quickly susses that his wife is seeing someone else. Here, he immediately anticipates that the muscular guy named Roman is not someone he should work with. This is... Oh, here's another thing. And... This isn't really that important to me. But that losing his job thing, uh, it's done for two reasons. One is that we want to see him as the underdog, as the good guy who's really being maligned. It works. It makes sense, right? You want him to be the underdog. But what we don't want to admit is that we don't want him employed. We don't want him to have a nine-to-five job. That goes against this strong individual narrative men have in their heads. We want him to be that criminal. That's why he's here. It's not because he's, he's forced to do things. It's in the story, right? We don't want to see him just grunting his way at a low status job. It's kind of like um, those Ayn Rand readers. You know, every guy who reads that no a novel. They, you know, Atlas Shrugged, they all want to believe that they're, they're this special little guy who's being held down by some exterior force, like the, the guys who are beneath you are all getting together and holding you down. And so they don't want to see, we don't want to see this guy, you know, working a nine to five and earning an honest wage, because that's for losers. It's a low status job. We want to see this guy doing risky things and taken from the man, even though all he's doing as a criminal is stealing from people who honestly work. But guys know this is seen as high status by comparison. And that's what guys care about, the status. Is it high or is it low? If it's high, it doesn't matter if it's a destructive thing for them to do, or actually leeching off to society, or if it's cowardly. Status is what guys care about. 
will give when Bradley destroys his wife's car out of anger, but with a certain precision. I think that's kind of a foreshadow as well of how he will be physically dismantling his enemies in later fight scenes, like a mechanic dismantling a car. Yeah, why do we want that? I mean, if he just, just wants to do these guys in, he like just has to do them in. He could turn around and break this guy's neck. So what's with all the dismantling? <laughs> because we want to see them dismantled. Just be honest. We want to see other men destroyed. Where's the bad guy? And he can't be nice about it. And then also that car dismantling that they showed there, that's embarrassing as hell. Because basically this woman slept all around on him and you know, the Trank had mindset, that's the ultimate. Some other guy got a piece. And so we can't take it out on her and the guy's not there to destroy. So he's got to take it out on some vehicle. Like I can understand that in a way. You don't want to hurt people, so you bust something up. But it also says, this guy, in a way, he should be able to punch her in the face. How dare you do this to me, if it's so important to him? But I'm just glad the other guy wasn't around. Because you know something? This woman, uh, she's the one who made promises to this guy who wanted to be fidel, you know, fidelity. The average guy on the street who might sleep with her, he hasn't promised this guy anything. But who's he going to destroy? He's going to be the guy if, he, if he's still there. He's going to chase him around, maybe break his bones. And then the wife is, or whatever she is to him, she gets reconciliation, even though she's the one who broke all the promises. And the guy's sleeping with her. Promises guy nothing. Can I ask you, so guy, something? When you have some pretty girl actually hit on you, do you ask her if, if she's married or not? No, you, the only thing you know in your head is some pretty woman's coming on to you and you've got a chance. You have nothing against some other guy. It's just that he's not even in your brain. You just make an assumption that uh, the girl is single somehow. And maybe you just push it out of your head that she has someone. You don't care about that guy. You don't, you were going to watch a movie where this guy dismantles other men. Why would you care if you're banging some other woman's, <laughs> some woman's, you know, some other guy's woman? I know I'm having, screwing up with my words here. But guys want to be honest. And then you want to turn around and say, well, yeah, I wouldn't sleep with another guy's wife, you know, because for the only the reason that you yourself don't want to be cuckolded. But frankly, in the modern day world, it's stupid anyway. What do you think the sexual revolution was about? Just so you could hold on to these stupid ideas. She has more power than you. Uh, she can get sex on tap and you can't. I think that's really the anger that men have to suffer through. This lack of power. That's where all this frustration comes from. You're in an unequal relationship and all relationships with the girls is going to be unequal because there's this old saying, you know, the person in the, po in the relationship with the power is one who loves the least. And frankly, the girls can do without the guys. And the guys want to revolve their entire lives around the girls. So There's going to be a huge power in differential. You know, or differential. You know, so rather than get angry and destroy things, why do you even bother getting into a relationship knowing that's going to be unequal? You know, they, I know guys don't really get much out of ca casual one night stands, but at least that's one of the few times that there's equality in a relationship. Say something I don't think I've ever heard anyone say to an employer in life or in a movie. Come to my office. You can tell it out here. I don't work in an office. I don't need to squeeze into one to hear some bad news. If the character is intelligent, then it's crucial that they speak little pals. Yeah, you want the character be intelligent. I can understand that. But in this context, it's also that Anne Rand's you know, syndrome. 
if we want this guy to be a superior amongst all these other guys and you know he can't be the leader that he's meant to be because you know he's not recognized and guys will actually put themselves in this guy's shoes say yeah that's me <laughs> no what you guys are and i am is probably one of these guys here who who just do whatever they can we're ordinary but we all want to think we're batman <laughs> Huh. Now, this one's an important one. This is a message that many critics and executives in the movie industry really don't want to hear, but they're going to have to hear it because a lot of preachy ideological propaganda movies are failing at the box office because audiences have had enough of it. Zala summed up this in an interview for IndieWire. Quote, I don't go to movies to be lectured and to have someone else's agenda forced down my throat. I'm more interested in building a world that has conflicting points of view than saying, this is what you should think, end quote. Fucking bravo. And Brawl in Cell Block 99 certainly serves up some truthful yet unfashionable social perspectives. I kind of disagree with that, actually. Uh, how does Cell Block 99 actually break the political correctness? Is it not politically correct to say, you know, destroy other men and use the flimsy excuse of family. By the way, family just means the woman, because I'll say it for a third time, the child is there for, to do, for the woman to do whatever she wants to. It's an object to her, it's her child. And it's very fashionable and always has been since civilization started and even before for guys to destroy other guys with the excuse of the woman and want to revolve their entire lives around this female. It's very fast. This is standard stuff. I mean, the, look, if you wanted to make a truly incorrect, you know, politically incorrect film, this guy who's so superior would just leave his woman. He'd punch her in the face after she slept around and said, look, you, you were infidel. You know, you, you were, you know, slept around on me and I'm leaving you and you're not good enough for me. That would be a politically incorrect film. doesn't posit the notion that all drug dealers are Mexicans. I mean, the lead character is a drug dealer. Movies these days, as in the father is out earning to provide, and when it comes to physical protection of the family, he takes the lead role. It doesn't fit with the PC reality denying worldview, but a lot of real marriages still operate in this way because that's what the husband and wife are happy with, and it's what feels natural to them. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but a lot of people are like that, and that. No. It is all women's cup of tea. All women want men looking after them, providing for them, <laughs> and take you know, and and throwing their their bodies in front of buses. Women didn't go in droves, you know, to Titanic to see uh, Rose get with Jack and live an impoverished life. Jack had to die in that movie. He had to throw his life for a while saying, I am useless. You are better than me by a thousand miles. I have to die for you. That's how important you are. All women want this. And men are willing to follow. Men have no other choice because <laughs> they want to revolve around the woman. And so they acquiesce. So whatever she wants, they give. So... This is <laughs> this idea that there's no political correct group of people, especially the girls, who say they don't want this. All that's happened is the price of bribing has gone so off up skyward that the men can't do it anymore. So that's all that's happened. That's what all I have to say about this anyway. We'll stop it here. <laughs>